Hello, welcome to Sunday Online coming from St John's Vicarage. It's very good to have you worshipping with us today. Today in the Anglican calendar is Candlemas. It's the day when we remember Jesus being presented at the temple uh, by Joseph and Mary and uh, Anna and Simeon uh, at the temple prophesying over him, re realising that he is the Messiah, God's anointed one. And in the church calendar, it's also the day where we switch our gaze from Christmas and all the celebrations we've enjoyed uh, more towards the cross. It's a kind of pivotal moment where we turn and face a slightly different direction. And Andy will be telling us more about that as he does the reflection for us this morning. Let's be quiet now as we prepare to worship. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed through all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may, the, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our readings today are read to us by Elizabeth and Lisa. This reading is taken from Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. Since, therefore, the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear he did not come to help angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall, shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there, with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, good, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Candlemas. I am Andy Storch, and I am the curate of the parish. A few years ago, I was standing in a queue at my local pharmacy. It was Maundy Thursday. The person ahead of me had just discovered the pharmacy would be closed the next day, Good Friday, as it was a public holiday. She asked the cashier, why do we have a bank holiday on Good Friday? And what is Good Friday? And why do we call it good? Well, the poor customer and cashier then had to listen as I explained as best I could the gospel to them in two minutes. I won't repeat that here. But when I started my curacy two and a half years ago, I was so ignorant about the church seasons, the lectionary and the patterns of worship throughout the year. Christmas and Easter were just about my lot, as I now know they are for most people in the UK. But I've loved getting to understand the movement of the liturgical year. This is the first year I fully understood that the Christmas season does not end on the 12th day of Christmas, Epiphany. The Epiphany season is still the Christmas season. So good news to those of us who still have their Christmas decorations up. We're OK. Neighbours might frown and judge, but we can be assured that the Christmas season goes on right through January. Although I must say, I do enjoy that moment when you take down the tree. And let's face it, if you've got a real tree, it's looking pretty sorry for itself by now. When you take down the tree, you take it outside, you hoover up those last pine needles, and lo and behold, you've got a big living room again. Today we look at Mary and Joseph as they offer their son and themselves to God, the presentation in the temple. This season of Christmas and Epiphany ends 40 days after Christmas. And that's because in Leviticus 12, it says that the mother remains clean for seven days after the birth. The circumcision is on the eighth day and 33 days later, the mother can be purified by coming to the temple and making an offering to the priest. And so Jesus Christ, this child who has been manifested to the Magi at his birth, is now recognised by Simeon and Anna when he comes to be presented in the temple, according to the law of Israel. He is both a light to lighten the Gentiles, and he is also the glory of God's people Israel. But the redemption he will bring must be won through suffering. The incarnation is directed to the passion. And Simeon's final words move our attention away from the celebration of Christmas and towards the mysteries of Easter. This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel. 
and a sword will pierce your own soul too, Simeon tells Mary. Candlemas thus becomes a pivotal day, a day of turning. In Advent, we lit candles, adding one candle each Sunday until Christmas Day, when we lit the central candle, representing the light of Christ coming into the world. We follow that with Epiphany, the three kings, or at least the unnumbered, but more than one, Magi. And they recognise Jesus as king of the world, revealed to all nations. We read of Christ's baptism by John, the start of Jesus' ministry, which includes confirmation that he is truly the Messiah, the Saviour sent to redeem us. And in the water made wine at Cana, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. And so we have seen all that Jesus is and offers to Israel and the whole world. And a consistent symbol of this whole season has been the candle. Yet this redemption comes with unimaginable cost. And it is only by turning from the joy and promise of Christmas to the drama and agony of Easter that we have the full story. Churches thus far full of candles would soon be turning to Lent leading up to that Good Friday that seems to be anything but good. And using up the old candles, and using up all the animal fat that was not to be eaten in Lent, today we remove the final Christmas decorations, the wreath, the nativity crib scene, and we put our candles out. And so today is a day for turning, and at the service at St Peter's, we end the service by turning from the front of the church to the back of the church as we extinguish our candles. Turning is the simplest synonym for repentance that we have. Turning from our sins, turning from the old me, turning to Christ, turning to the cross. So as we approach Lent, let us now consider those things which we have been clinging to and that we must let go. Things that hinder us in our race for Christ. Things that we keep hidden in the darkness while deep down we know our Father can see. Could it be pride in something we unfairly take credit for? Could it be bitterness at a relationship that has gone sour? Could it be anger at a person because of what they said? Could it be fascination in things that aren't ours? Could it be obsession with self and self-image? Or could it be selfishness in an area where we preach selflessness? As always, you will realise all these are my own sins, although they might chime with you too. And we can lay them all at the foot of the cross. They are dealt with by his sacrifice. We can put them behind us. Now Lent doesn't actually start tomorrow. The shortest gap, the shortest possible gap from Candlemas to Lent is three days. But you will have to wait until 2285 for that. With a later Easter this year, we have a full four weeks of ordinary time, a sort of green buffer, like a synchro mesh clutch, helping us to change gear. And in these four Sundays of February, we shall be following a sermon series, studying the book of Jonah in detail, getting beyond the whale. If you want to delve deeper than the sermons, we would love to welcome you in one of the four home groups, which will be studying Jonah in parallel with the sermons. See how for Jonah, God did not wait for him to turn from the direction of Spain to the direction of Nineveh. God did it for him. Let's pray. Dear God, let us pray that unlike Jonah, we will not run from you, but turn to you willingly. As we say farewell to this bright season of Christmas that lightens our grey winters, so give us courage to face the new year with a cleaner heart, 
where those things we know are barriers to you are released, turned away from and dealt with. Help us to t- help us to turn to you with renewed closeness as we walk this journey of faith, holding your hand. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the Christmas season during which we celebrate with joy your coming into the world to be our saviour. Thank you for being light in our darkness. As we shift our gaze now towards the cross and what you came to do for our sake, help us to turn away from anything we know to be wrong in our lives and to surrender afresh to your will and way. Help us to throw off anything that mars our witness and help us to fix our eyes on you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, when we cast our eyes around the world, we see so many things that concern and upset us. We see tanks and soldiers gathered on the Ukraine border. We see poverty, hunger and fear in Afghanistan, Yemen, Madagascar, Ethiopia, devastation in Tonga, 
Lord, we pray for all those in authority in our world who have power to influence events and to bring change in these regions. We pray for all who are involved in diplomatic efforts to bring and maintain peace. And we pray for all those trying to relieve suffering and get aid to those who need it. Tear funds, Christian aid, Doctors Without Borders, Oxfam, Save the Children and many more. May these organisations be effective in relieving pain and distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, Lord, that throughout the world she would be a light in the darkness. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for following you in Afghanistan, North Korea, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan and so many other parts of the world. Bless the work of the Barnabas Trust and Open Doors who try to support those who are facing persecution. In this country, we pray for our Archbishops, Justin and Stephen, for Stephen, Bishop of Oxford, as he recovers from COVID, and for Olivia, Bishop of Reading. Give them wisdom, Lord, in all their decision-making and keep them walking closely with you. We pray for all clergy who have been wearied through the years of the pandemic. Renew our vision, Lord. Set on fire our hearts and embolden us to proclaim the good news of Jesus in our communities. Lord, we long to see people turning to you in faith. So send your Holy Spirit upon your church that we might be an effective witness in our communities and enable many, many people to come to faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Cavisham, thanking you for all that's good, the beauty of the river and all our parks, the sense of community in our centre, the library, the business community, for surgeries and health centres, for the Weller Centre and all the different voluntary groups that seek to make Cavisham a good place to live. Cadra, Cavisham Good Neighbours, RVA, Friends of Cavisham Court and the Conservation Volunteers. Thank you too for our local police officers, our PCSOs who try to get to know the community and keep us safe. Help them, Lord, to do a good job, to prevent and expose crime and to bring perpetrators to justice. And we pray for the victims of crime and violence in our community, asking you to heal their wounds and help them to overcome the things that have happened to them. We pray that all those currently involved in criminal activities would turn from them and find a better path. We pray against the gang culture and the rise in knife crime. We pray that you would help us to build a community where all people feel valued and safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for those we know in particular need today. For all who are sick and in hospital. And from our fellowship we remember Dinah and Ivy. We pray for those with terminal illnesses. For parents caring for children with special needs. For relatives caring with people with dementia those struggling with poor mental health. Just in the quiet, take a moment to lift to the Lord anyone on your heart this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer colic for today. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That concludes our service for this morning. Thanks so much for joining with us. Next week, as Andy said, we begin a sermon series looking at the book of Jonah from the Old Testament. And if you're local and you'd like to join a midweek uh, Bible study group meeting in somebody's house, uh, you're most welcome to do that. There's also one group that will be running on Zoom. So wherever you are in the country, you could join that one. Do message me if you'd like to. My email is penny, P-E-N-N-Y, at ctmparish.org.uk. You can find it on the website for St John, St Peter's and St Margaret's, if you can't uh, remember that now. A reminder, tonight there's a prayer meeting, as always, at 7.30 on Zoom. Again, you're most welcome to join with us, either to just pray silently or uh, out loud, whichever you prefer. That's all for this week. I'll be here again next Sunday at the same time. And uh, I'll see you then. Bye for now. <laughs>